Welcome to Training Unleashed, the show that will help you design and deliver training that's off the chain and will make a difference. Now, here's your host, Evan Hackle. Welcome to another amazing edition of Training Unleashed. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about culture. And, uh, God, what was his name? Peter Drucker, yes, said, uh, culture eats strategy for lunch. And I, and I got to believe that, that is, I got to believe, I know that's true. And culture is something that is so important, and, and a lot of people don't talk about it. And we in the training world, we're responsible for culture. So this is going to be a really incredible podcast. Uh, we have a really great guest. His name is Lucy, uh, Lucas Mack. He is with 4th Avenue Media. And he has a podcast called The Golden Rule Revolution. And at the end, he's got a really great free offer. So stick around to the end. Lucas, welcome to Training Unleashed. And tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks for having me on, Evan. Um, so I am a former TV reporter, broadcast journalist turned entrepreneur, and I help companies uh, develop their internal story, their belief structure that they can apply externally to the marketplace, but also internally with the same passion to their employees within their walls. So what is a story and why does that matter? A story is more than just uh, words strung together. Story is the essence of humanity's means of communication. We have a mind and we have a heart. And the five questions that make up a story, who, what, when, where, and why, connect with the mind and the heart. However, four of those questions, who, what, when, where, connect with the mind. And companies are really good at talking about those who, what, when, where. What they struggle with is talking about the why. And I ask why. <laughs> <laughs> it invokes emotion. They have to internally reflect. And when we have a lot of data-driven leadership, which is great, most often they don't want to sink down into their heart as easily as they want to stay in their mind and look at the data. So why is the only question that engages someone's heart. And the sad reality is, I think for most companies, especially with their employees and their customers, every human being on planet Earth buys the same way. We buy emotionally and we back it up logically. So no one goes to the grocery store and thinks, well, I want 12% riboflavin. Uh, oh, which has that? And then looks at the label. We all are compelled by label, message, our own desire to satiate a need and then we look at the price, and then we look at the ingredients. And it's the same way with story. We have to know who, what, when, where, and we need to know those well. But we also need to know why. So we communicate that, especially to the millennial generation, which is hungry for greater purpose than the paycheck. Then we can communicate that, and our customers feel that sense of purpose. They feel a sense of belonging when they buy with us. So it not only creates uh, stronger relationships with customers, but it also builds stronger relationships with employees and builds a sense of community all from story. Well, first off, I total, I mean, we could not be more in sync and you and I have <laughs> talked about this before. Yes. And, you know, people need to get it. They need to know why they're doing what they're doing, why the company does, what makes the company special, why it matters to the customer, why it matters to them all of that. What I would love to get you to do is share maybe a case study, an example of an organization that you've gone into, help change the culture via story and the definition of culture and the results that came from that. Hmm. Yes. So I ask leadership within companies one question and I have a, a formula that we go through and create the brand story and it's company A, so or a company believes only when variable A can variable B, which variable C. So we start with those A, B, and C variables. The A variable is the why in the story. It's the belief. I believe only when something happens, 
can my objective take place? My mission become successful. And the what, it's most often we reduce what to particulars. Like, what do you do? Well, I type every day, you know. But we, what motivates us is that objective what, that universal what. What are you setting out to accomplish every day? So that's the B. And then the C variable is, so what? <laughs> so you believe this, you're successful in your mission. What does that mean to me? Like, who cares? Why should I care? And I help companies articulate the so what, so then they message. What I ask them to do, though, we start with the B variable. What's your objective? And I ask them, and I'll get into a specific case study, but this leads to it, is what would you crawl bloody knuckled over a broken field of glass to accomplish? What would you give everything for? Because most often we give these platitudes, these surface level answers, you know, up, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's really, that's what wakes you up. That's what lights your fire. That's, you expect people to work a full eight hour days with intention. Because the stats, uh, Gallup says, the average millennial right now is working three to five hours a day at most, at most. So let's say the conservative side, they're working a good five hours. That's three hours they're getting paid and who knows what they're doing. And let's say on the liberal side, they're, they're working three. Well, to get someone to work that full eight with intention and passion and purpose, the leadership must articulate, what are we here to do? What's the, what's the battlefield? What is the objective? What is the mission? So... This one company, it's a manufacturing company here in Seattle. They have uh, 500 employees. They have seven different locations. And when I first started working with the leadership, uh, we were walking through a plant floor and I stuck around and the, the president and some of our crew kept going as he was given a tour of the plant. And I overheard uh, one of the employees say to another employee, and they didn't see me, I said, there goes the carpet walkers. <laughs> and I, it really, it, I had not even ever thought that someone would think that or say that and they didn't see me and I walked, walked along and kept going with them and I rejoined the tour and it stuck with me. There goes the carpet walkers. How many companies actually have that same narrative taking place? It might not be on the plant floor. It might be out in the cubicles. It's somewhere, but there's this divide between the leadership and the people actually on the ground. I have a term for this. I call it beware of high level dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. High level dumb is uh because they just detach they're, they're yes. detached from the reality of the business. Exactly right. So when we asked them, we went through and I actually told the leadership that. And so we developed their brand story. And off the top of my head, I don't recall what the brand story was, but they believed, you know something i don't don't recall but what happened was at the end of the day they really believed in relationships and so i said okay there's three ingredients to make a relationship you have to know like and trust someone and so if you want to build relationships with your customers but don't have relationships with your employees and certainly you don't because they're calling you carpet walkers you have to start with internal communication you have to you have to inspire your culture or inspire your employees to build a more robust inspired culture before you go to the marketplace. So what we did was we created a TV show, a web, a web series show that was private, that went to all 500 employees, all their management, all their leadership. And we had these series called, um, I've been caught. So the, the president of the company, we would film him ambush an employee at random. It was, it was great because people were really shocked as to what's going on. And he would give them a t-shirt. And the t-shirt had the silhouette of someone with their hands up. And it just simply said, I've been caught. And what the premise was, they were caught doing right. Oh. And we started catching people doing right. And it transformed. And we would highlight why it matters. We would do these segments, why it matters. Um, did you know? Uh, meet your coworker. Um, sales win. And um, another, another uh, segment. There were six segments in all. So or two more segments. And we would do these weekly shows and it transformed that culture. He actually stopped hiring and using a staffing company to fill their void because they had their employees. They kept the retention drop 
I mean, I'm sorry, their attrition dropped, their attention, uh, retention increased. Uh, increased. Yeah. And um, that was a great client. And we do that with companies um, all the time, whether they have 20 to 200, 500, it doesn't matter. It's, it's inspiring people because inspired people inspire people. However, uninspired people uninspire people. So that's, that, yeah. that's pretty much simplified in, in uh, what we do. Well, I, I love what you're talking about because you're planning culture training. Hmm. And, you know, culture training isn't a workshop. Right. Culture training is ongoing and it's continuous. That's right. And uh, it's leading by example. I, I love what, what, you're, what you're talking about. Um, but, you know, people can do it in simpler ways too. Um, and, you know, it's just thinking about it and proactively evaluating culture. So let me ask you this question. How do you evaluate culture when you go into a new client? We do um, an internal survey of their employees and it's anonymous. We have this template email that the leadership sends out and says a third party is going to do an assessment of our culture. Please on it, um, answer honestly as we will not know the answers and truly they don't. We keep that wall uh, divide uh, very strong. But I, the intake form is unbelievable and people I've, I've seen employees vent and write in all caps and you know incredibly upset employees share the truth of things that they're struggling with it might not be the truth but it's their truth it's their experience and to bring that back to the leadership and say okay we went through your brand story we went through what you believe and what you're setting out to do now here's what your employees are experiencing there's a huge gap. So then we put together a plan to how, so you, yeah, it's not always a TV show, web series, but it's something. And it's, it's usually starts. I've never seen a company not need the leadership, the captains of the ship to humble themselves and go and inspire the people in the plant floor or the company to walk through. I know you, you do leadership by walking through doing walkthroughs and checking in with people. And that is, that is what people need. They need to be connected with because it goes back to relationship. You have to know someone like someone and trust someone. So a lot of leaders we know and like, but because they don't ever come to us or get down in the trenches with them, there's no trust built. We're so glad you're listening to this episode of Training Unleashed, brought to you by Tortal Training. The difference between Tortal Training and other online training companies is we're primarily a training company with technology rather than a technology company that does training. Want to find out more? Just go to Tortal.net. That's T-O-R-T-A-L, Tortal.net. I had a client once and... I do not have a, a tool like you have. I, I generally do one-on-one -on -one interviews uh, with a, sometimes everybody, but generally a segment. And it was very clear that no one knew what was going on in the company, literally nothing. Mm. You know, was business good? Was business bad? What direction was the company going? What we were doing? You know, was management happy? Was management unhappy? And it was a relatively small company, had like 16 employees. And I said, you should have a monthly meeting and just let people know what's going on. I think I goes, I, I, what would I talk about? <laughs> <laughs> and, What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I said, well, you know, you've got different people. You could have your head of sales could report on how sales are and you got manufacturing. They could report and you could just open up for questions. That's right. And let people ask questions. And, um, and similarly to you, they worked on building plan and, and, and a vision and a why for their company. Yeah. Um, but when people get it, you, you, you hyper grow. You uh, know, you just reminded me of the question why there's a lot. Simon Sinek's come out with why popularized, why just popularized human interaction, which he's really good at observing. But why is the only question that will give context to content? And our, I wrote, I had a book wrote a couple of years ago, but in the book I say content without context is a very dangerous thing. And you know, there's a, there's a, 
uh, comedian Dimitri Martin in, in one of his shows, he said, what's the difference between peeing in the pool and peeing into the pool? Location, 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 you know, giving context is incredibly important. And I don't mean to make light of that, but I think it's a great point. Why giving even, it doesn't matter how many employees, giving them the why puts in order the what, the when, the where, the who. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, you got the big why, but you got small whys too. Mm. Yes. And, and uh, so like in my company, um, we have a business that goes up and down based on sales and, and things. And we hire employees and we hire to the minimum level of business, meaning business we know will never go below this. So if we hire you, we don't have to terminate you. Then mm. we sub out the rest of the work. And at one time, I had a lot of pressure on to hire more people. And when I said, well, the reason why we don't hire more people is that we don't lay people off here, that that's against the culture of the company. Mm. So we hire and we sub out to ensure that your job is not at risk. And that's then right. all of a sudden, the light bulb goes off. Oh, I get why you're doing what you're doing. And then all of a sudden, you now have a change like, oh, I guess outsourcing does make sense and that we shouldn't just go hire, you know, for the sake of hiring and then being in a position where we have to have a layoff. Um, That's powerful. That's yeah. powerful. And, you know, but most people make decisions and just, this is the decision. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's important to look at it in every aspect. Mm. Um, so, there are people that we're talking to in this audience, they're training people. That's what they do. That's what they live. That's what they, they breathe. And a lot of the issues in training is that to do something significant, you, you have to get complete buy-in and leadership, right? So someone in the running a training department or working in a training department listens to us and says, you know, Lucas is a genius. We need to do that. <laughs> But if the, if the CEO of the company doesn't buy in, hmm. is it, is it going to work? And the answer is probably not. Right. And so what advice do you give to people to sell up in an organization that, that if they want to, you know, obviously hiring you would be an option. Yes. Uh, not, every, not everyone is going to hire you that's going to listen. That's and right. if everyone did hire you, you would be overwhelmed. Yes. <laughs> but, right. uh, but uh, you know, if you're saying, okay, look, at, I, I want to, to train more on culture. I want culture to be a bigger part. I want our why to be a bigger part of this organization. I have ideas on how to do it. Now I need to sell up. What advice would you give someone? The first, the first step is spending time on Gallup's website. Because I think leadership that doesn't buy into culture, um, they just don't understand the impact to the bottom line. It, it costs a company 20 to 150% someone's annual salary when they leave a company. So the bottom line profit gets eroded. We, we're still focused often on the top line revenue, increasing sales, you know, the body count, the number, all, the, all these things. But it's the bottom line profit that can get eroded if the culture is not strong. And so I would spend time in Gallup and learn the data and understand that uh, the millennial generation right now is the least engaged um, generation in the workforce. That's not an indictment on them, by the way. It's an indictment on leadership because they want purpose. They want a reason greater than the paycheck or they'll leave after two years and then the narrative will continue. All oh, those millennials, they just blah, blah, blah. And the you're reality being very, You're is, being very optimistic they stay for two. Yeah. Well, you're right. You're right, because even at my company, they gave me sometimes a year and then, then gave me a week's notice and they were out of there. So, um, by the way, yes, I don't always, I, I, I'm a little older than you. Mm -hmm. So in the 60s and 70s, when you watch TV, the stereotypical boss gave orders and the stereotypical employee accepted them. Mm -hmm. They never left work. They would never risk losing a job ever. Right. right. And because of that, management developed a style. Mm. And it worked because that was the culture. Yep. The culture of the world is different today. And yes. we all need to, to, as I like to say, level up, change. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the way I like to explain to people is, and, and, you know, you talk about the new generation, is we need to evolve. 
Yes. To the new reality. Yes. But, but anyhow, I'm sorry. I interrupted, which I do a lot, but it is no, my I, show. So I, I think, no, <laughs> it is, certainly is. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I, I think that the, just because, I mean, look, the leadership that doesn't adapt, it's because they intrinsically somewhere believe they've always done it this way. They've always done it this way. They've seen success. We built multi, multi million dollar companies. And who are you to say, you know, otherwise? And the reality is, it, the floor shifted be underneath them. It's not, you know, they look out, it might look the same, but below is different. And um, I heard this term the other day, elder millennial. So I'm born in 81 and they say 81 to 84 is this, this uh, special millennial group where I remember we had a black and white TV when I was young. I mean, I didn't grow up affluence in any way shape or form but i remember the analog i remember the the uh, eight track i remember the vhs and the betamax and all those uh all those things that at some point even quote unquote the millennial generation had no concept of they were just born into digital and i understand my stewardship of my peers that are a little younger when i mentor to give context of it's not always been this way and I'm looking down the tree also though, understanding looking up the tree and the responsibility that the tree above me has to give context to it's not always been this way. And if we stay, it's always been this way and it will always continue to be this way. That's, that's just poor leadership. I believe. Yeah. Um, by the way, I totally agree with you on the Gallup research. It's powerful. It's an, it's, yes. inv- it's invigorating. Um, I'm just going to share one other idea. Um, I like to convert savings into sales. Hmm. So just say for a second that a company does, has 5% net profit. Okay. If you save the company $5,000, it's like you made a hundred thousand dollar sale. Hmm. And someone makes a hundred thousand dollar sale. Everyone's cheering. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yes. You say, Oh, I just saved $5,000. Well, good for you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and, and the $5,000, by the way, is an annual thing that keeps repeating. That's right. Right? So, yeah. you know, if you look at, you know, if you can change retention and save the hiring of 10 people a year and save the company a half a million dollars, that's like you made a $10 million sale. Yes. How excited would people be about a $10 million sale? That's right. Every year. That's right. Um, <laughs> So it's it's just a it's just a different way of, just a different way of thinking. And I think so, people that want to change the culture need to use that example to the leadership who aren't bought in. This because yeah. that is a great example. They need to see that. Yeah. Okay, we are running out of time. It's been a great interview, but I always and we have two things left. One is the one tip you would share, and two is your amazing offer. So mm. let's do the your your one tip you would share. My one tip is really spend time figuring out what you would crawl bloody knuckled over a broken field of glass to accomplish. You as a trainer, you as a leader, you as a human being, like what would you give everything for? Because when you walk into a room, especially in training rooms or when I was at T-Mobile corporate and we changed the whole culture of the 1300 telesales agents that they had all over the country to match, which they're all subbed out companies to match the culture of T-Mobile we had to go in with a specific purpose of like, we are here to align with John Ledger essentially (laughs) and top down. But we were very clear in our purpose. Spend time knowing that of yourself. And that is the why of what you're doing. And people will respond to that because the person with a why stands out from the crowd. What's our commoditized whys stand out? So let me just challenge our listeners that if they don't know that answer right now, they need to think about contacting you Hmm. and they also need to think about your podcast. Why don't you quick tell people about your podcast? My podcast is called The Golden Rule Revolution and it truly, I believe, revolutionary to live the golden rule. And it's not a religious narrative. It's not a religious podcast whatsoever. It's just to treat people like people and nothing less. And I believe when we treat people with a mind and a heart, that's revolutionary and not um, just treating them as a data point. And so I have 
uh, business leaders. I have all sorts of leaders who are in the business community and different facets of uh, society talking about their stories and the great impacts that they've seen when they treat people like people. And we've also had stories of people share very traumatic things that have happened to them and how they've overcome, how they've gotten healing from those areas and gone out and made um, greater social change. So it's a really cool podcast where um, I think it gives hope to people and also gives tools uh, for people. Cool. So um, check out check out Lucas's podcast. He's got a special offer too. Why don't you tell us about that? So the offer is anyone listening, if you go to fourthavenuemedia.com and on the menu where it says get inspired, you can click internal communications and there's a culture assessment there where you can take that assessment and I will give you a free diagnostic of your current culture and some solutions. We can have a 30 minute call uh, solutions of what you can do to improve right now. So there's a culture assessment under our page, internal communications and happy to help anyone. To, most people are going to get this in writing like a description but some, some places where we're covered, there isn't. So you need to share your website. Okay, it's fourth. It's the number four, TH, Avenue, A-V-E-N-U-E, media.com, backslash internal dash communications, backslash. <laughs> but you Excellent. can find it just going to fourthavenuemedia.com. That sounds great. Well, I want to thank you for being a guest. Uh, I've learned some things. I hope our listeners have. Uh, thank you for such a nice offer and uh, have a wonderful day. And thanks the audience for uh, listening. Thanks, Evan. It's been a pleasure. This has been Training Unleashed, but it doesn't stop here. Just go to trainingunleashed.net to subscribe to the show. That way you'll never miss an episode and you'll be well on your way to delivering training programs that are off the chain. We'll talk to you next time on Training Unleashed.